So what we've got here is a 1983 Mercedes-Benz 300 TD. This is what I would call a resto mod car. There's been changes made to just kind of modernize the overall design, but also a completely thorough restoration as well. So one of the first things you're going to notice is that there's no body side molding. The body side molding was a strip that ran all the way down this line of the car and it's been removed completely. Gives the vehicle a lot more cleaner appearance overall and I think just looks much more modern and clean and if I had to guess exactly how Mercedes would design it if they were designing this car today. So the other things that have been done are these Euro style headlights. They're not actual Bosch Euro lights, they're the depot lights. The Bosch ones were just insanely difficult to get and when you did get them sometimes they didn't work and it was really it just too difficult to accomplish. I've also got the European bumpers on this car and they look fantastic as you can see. They also have headlight squirters. They're not currently hooked up. <clears throat> you also have to find the, the dash uh, switch to make them work but <clears throat> I don't think it'd be that difficult. Everything with these cars you can find the parts. You just have to find the part number and then it's just a question of finding the part. Relatively easy. So as you can see also upgraded the wheels and tires so these are a Mercedes style wheel they're not um, typical for this car they're also 16 inch versus the bunt wheels that came on the car which were 14 inch so that 16 inch wheel really makes quite a difference here with the ground clearance as you can see <coughs> So one of the other things of this Resto mod is that the trim has been blacked out. So instead of the bright, um, it wasn't chrome, it was kind of a anodized aluminum, light aluminum. And a lot of these cars had issues with that because different car wash chemicals over the years would disagree with the aluminum and cause these discolorations. And I just thought that the blacked out trim looked really quite nice on the car overall so and I also found some blacked out uh, cowl covers um, these were from a, basically a base model 240D <clears throat> so everything works on the car including the rear wiper and washer and again here we've got the rear bumpers the Euro style bumpers and I even did a Euro style rear red fog light on the left and then the white reverse light on the right <clears throat> so the headlight and tail lights are all perfect this is one fly in the chrome of the rear bumper. Uh, you could get it re-chromed, but for the money and the environmental aspects, I chose not to. So one of the challenges with removing the body molding, because it would come right along here, uh, along here on the car. And as you come into this area around this aluminum trim here, uh, all of this was kind of hidden by that <clears throat> and when this was masked off and painted they didn't do the best job of, of that to be honest with you uh, and I'd, I'd like to redo that I, I wish I could get that redone um, but overall that's kind of the one flaw on the entire paint process and this lovely scratch here also because 
I was an idiot and as soon as the car was finished painting I pushed it into the garage again and the tailgate was up but I do have a gallon of this paint that will go with the car so that won't be a problem for anyone to worry about matching it <clears throat> but as you can see the polish and the shine of this paint and the clear coat is really astonishing. Uh, the reflective value of the roof and and the clarity and smoothness is really amazing. Same thing on the hood. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paint. And it's along the side. Everything is just beautiful, shiny, glossy, and uh, it was color sanded and everything after the paint job. So this was very well done. The exception of that uh, uh, tailgate latch snafu. So here's the rear tire and wheel. And we'll open up the back here. This is the rear seating compartment. The rear seat is the original MB Tex. So it was, it was clean and in perfect condition and just no reason to to change it out the cargo area the carpeting was redone and look at this a rear latch that actually works on the interior release all of those are broken on these cars and uh, good luck finding one it was really a nightmare they finally came up with uh, uh, mercedes-benz began stocking them again um, but the whole whole thing was about three hundred dollars believe it or not <clears throat> Here's the front seats and the interior. The seat pat map pockets have been restored because you know they're always sagging in these cars. But that was taken care of and remedied and fixed, and they're nice and tight and they hold really, really well now. <clears throat> it's a new carpet kit throughout. <clears throat> The front seats have been done. <clears throat> there are these floor mats in here right now, but obviously they don't need to stay. I take them out and the carpet is very nice underneath. It's brand new. The front seats are a leather and uh, I think that they were done really well actually. I was very specific. I wanted the ribbing to be true to the period. So the six, uh, you know the, the the five rib pleats were uh, standard or part of uh, the leather at that time that was what indicated that it was leather and then also the double double stitching here this was uh, this was another part of it I also requested that the center portion be perforated so it's a little bit cooler so come inside now and as you can see this is a very special car it's not very many turbo wagons with the four-speed manual transmission and then we've got the center stack you'll see is also unique the push button climate control system is gone it was replaced with a very much simpler uh, climate control system from a uh, euro spec 300 TD which is also where the transmission and driveline came from. So the driveline in this car is a legitimate uh, Mercedes-Benz driveline for a manual transmission wagon. So it's the full length that is supposed to be there. Uh, the only thing I had done to it was the center bearings replaced and made sure that the flex and replaced also the flex discs as well. Um, the climate control system works incredibly well. The AC has been upgraded to a Sandin compressor unit that is uh, much more efficient than the original units that were in these cars. They didn't cool very well at all. So another unique feature of this car is uh, that it has a W124 temperature gauge indicator for the outside temperature mounted in the uh, in the area below the speedometer you just turn on the key and it comes on and 
and uh, it's incredibly accurate actually. Uh, the clock still works and the tachometer works, speedometer works, mileage is true. This is the speedometer that came with this car and that is the true mileage for this car and the engine. The transmission uh, and driveline is a different mileage, of course, because it came from a different car. Um, but it's uh, it's under 200,000. It's, it's much less, actually. So here you've got the three pedals to make it all work. And parking brake, uh, rear window wiper, antenna, everything is functional on this car. Everything's been done. The radio was replaced um, I don't remember actually what was in here when I bought the car but it was not already the Becker was already gone uh, Becker's never worked anyway so I don't think it was anything anyone uh, terribly is gonna miss uh, there are a lot of parts that will come with this car you know some of the parts are the parts that I took off as part of the resto mod process um, so some of those parts would be like your uh, uh, yeah, there's not actually that many parts that uh, that would be part of the rest of mine. I didn't keep the body side molding because it was mostly destroyed when it came off, and the roof rack was uh, was sold separately. So those pieces are gone. But the bunt wheels will come with the car, and a whole about two boxes of different parts they can there's an extra oil cooler there's an extra vacuum pump there's just all kinds of things that i would pick up out of fear of these things becoming no longer available and that's that's been happening actually with a lot of the parts for these cars but oddly enough too though after a while of them not being available they come back then and, and they're available again so the headliner is all in very good shape there's one small tear right here behind the latch uh, for the sunroof, but the sunroof functions very smoothly, opens very nicely, and it has the proper Mercedes-Benz uh, sunroof lubrication, which, believe it or not, is a, is a thing, um, and it is what you're supposed to use on these cars. It's quite hard to find, but I, I, I got a little in of it and, and keep the sunroof nice and lubricated. The door locks work. The vacuum system works throughout the car. Um, a lot of these cars, for some reason, people either don't know how to fix the door locks or they just don't quite understand how that process works. Sorry for the jerky camera movements there. So super super comfortable car with these seats i drove it from los angeles to seattle about four years ago made the trip just absolutely beautifully no issues whatsoever 70 75 miles an hour all the way and delivered about 25 miles to the gallon um, not bad for a vehicle this old so the car also will come with a 288 uh, rear differential that you could put in if you wanted, if you wanted to, to have a more relaxed freeway cruising speed. Rear tire and wheel. This is one of my favorite aspects of these cars is just that sound. <laughs> so here's the cargo area. Okay, the new latch and the inside handle as well. And yes, I will admit that the carpeting around the wheel wells um, is difficult and I'll tell you I fought with that for five or six hours trying to get that as nice as I possibly could the rest of the the trim here that's been done has been done really nice as you can see um, all of these things work
open up. There are some additional pieces of carpeting here. So I didn't put them on the backs of the seats here because, oh my gosh, I couldn't figure out how to, how to get them in there. And if I tore the seats apart, would I get them back together again? Would the rest of the seat ever look the same? There were just so many challenges there to do that. And I just opted to just leave the pieces and, and let someone else do that if they really think that those, I don't think they need to be replaced. They look, the seat back carpeting looks really good and I just don't think it needs to be replaced. There is a trailer hitch. I wouldn't hook up very much to it other than maybe a, a bike rack. All of the seals are in perfect condition. None of them are torn or ripped. Most of them have been replaced. The front door seals were all replaced. They're new and, uh, and, and very squishy and quite tight, actually. You almost, yeah, for a long time, you had to slam the doors to get them to, to close. Uh, the rear ones um, have also been replaced, but there's also additional uh, door seals that'll come with the with the car as well. So you've got another I don't know 30 years of door seals. His car did have a color change, but as you can see, it was done really well. The door jams, everything, there's no indication of the previous color. If you get really, really tight in a couple of places, like right, right here, then you can see it, but it is very difficult. This trim here was not removed because it's impossible to remove without destroying, so it was just left in place. And the same thing for this trim around the windows. You really couldn't pull it off without destroying it. So the rest of the trim, like this trim down here on the doors, the door handles, mirrors, this trim along the roof line, uh, the windshield, back window, uh, cowls, wipers, windshield washer nozzles, grill, headlights, lights, everything like that was removed uh, for the paint. So. It was literally a body in white uh, paint job. So let's see if I can do this one handed. Could be tricky. There we go. So there's the engine. Everything is super clean. The engine was pulled out as part of the restoration and completely cleaned. And uh, certain parts were replaced, like the engine shock absorbers, things like that, that you know are, are good to replace as you've got them out. Engine mounts are obviously all new as well. Also, the oil cooler lines are brand new, uh, as you can see here. They go all the way back to the oil filter. Um, the cruise control does work. Uh, the tachometer works. The power steering pump is right here. It's all functional. There's no leaks. There's no issues there. The um, thermostat housing uh, was replaced because the old one was uh, had electrolysis on the interior of it. So that's another thing that I've done here is this uh, the coolant is a waterless coolant. It's Evans waterless coolant highly recommended by Jay Leno of all people and uh, it doesn't pressurize because there's no water in it and the other advantage of that also is it eliminates the electrolysis that happens uh, when there are differences between metals like aluminum and, and iron as they touch together they can create an electrolysis cavitation problem that will literally eat the aluminum away so then that happens because people don't use the actual Mercedes coolant that they're supposed to use. <clears throat> new uh, water hoses throughout, everything is brand new. There is absolutely not one water hose that wasn't replaced. Heater hoses, 
everything was replaced. And as you can see, the bypass valve for the heater hose is the manual system uh, from the Eurocar as well. The brakes all work perfectly. Absolutely nothing going on there. There's still some of my, my masking tape of, of reminding where to plug things in. Uh, windshield washer reservoir holds water, doesn't leak. So brand new uh, Nissan's from Denmark radiator. And the 126 W126 fan for the air conditioning system that's in front of a parallel flow uh, condenser which these cars did not have. They had a directional flow or a one-way flow condenser. Uh, these condensers are so much more efficient and cool so much better than the, uh, than the ones that came on the car. And this uh, 126 fan is probably 40% larger overall than the 123 fan. And as you can see, you have to bend the, the core support brackets a little bit. They're not actually much of a core support. They just go to the bumper. I don't know necessarily that they actually support anything but they do give something to attach the fan to at least. And I think that about covers it. We can uh, give it a little start up here if you want to hear it hear it start up. It's still cold. I just drove it over to this parking lot to do this really quick video. But that's how quickly it starts every single time. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful running little car. I mean, it's... Every time I start this car and drive this car, I am just amazed at how fantastic it really is. Sounds fantastic. Um, on the engine, the only thing I did was the injectors were replaced with uh, Monarch nozzles. So they're Bosch injectors with, uh, with the Monarch nozzles that were all pop tested and matched together by someone that I really trust with that stuff. Uh, his name is uh, Oil Geezer and uh, he's pretty famous on most of the forums and does a fantastic job. Uh, the vacuum system works to shut off the ignition, so everything, as I say, functions on this car as it should. So I think that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope, uh, I hope uh, the new owner enjoys it as much as I have.